So then guys, today I'm going to be comparing the brand new M4 14 inch MacBook Pro to the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Because funny enough, this is the most popular request I've had from you guys is to compare the M4 to the M3 Pro and specifically to actually compare the baseline version. So what I'm talking about here with the M3 Pro is the 512 gigabyte storage, 18 gigabytes of RAM, the 11 core version of the CPU, and also the 14 core version of the GPU, not the 12 core uh, CPU and the 18 core GPU and more RAM or more storage, just the baseline version. And it's the same here for the M4. To compare it to the 512 gigabyte model and then that to actually have the 10 core CPU and also to have the 10 core GPU inside of it. And to compare both of these to see which one is a better deal because right now obviously this comes out at one 1,599 US dollars for the M4 MacBook Pro, whereas when this one came out, it was actually costing us 1,999 US dollars. However, right now, like on Amazon, Best Buy, lots of other places, this has been discounted quite heavily. And obviously you can sometimes pick it up for about the same price as one of these brand new, or maybe slightly more or even slightly less. So a lot of you guys are asking the question, which one should I go for? Well, to be deadly honest, I'm gonna tell you now, I would personally still be picking the M4. Straight away off the bat, I'm gonna say this, is that the M4 battery life is far superior than what we get inside the M3 Pro. The M3 Pro right now can give us a battery life of up to 20 hours, whereas this one here can actually give us a battery life up to 24 four hours. So that straight away is amazing what you're going to be getting there. You're almost getting, I'd say, about one fifth more battery life just by picking the M4 MacBook Pro. Plus it's also a newer chip and it means that Apple will probably be supporting this for a little bit longer into the future compared to, say, the M3 Pro, personally. But probably still going to get about another six years of updates. But this one, we're going to get seven years of updates. Apart from that, the actual design of both these MacBook Pros are exactly the same. We've got the same amount of ports and everything, same speeds and things like that inside of those ports. The only one difference I'd say with the M4 MacBook Pro is obviously you can pick that nano texture kind of screen if you want to do that. But obviously this wouldn't make it a baseline version anymore. But apart from that, really they are identical. But what's going on underneath these MacBook Pros is where the big differences lie. And I want to show you some benchmarks here to compare the actual differences between both of these MacBook Pros. And first of all, let's talk about the CPU differences. So to a lot of you guys, this chart you're seeing right here is probably the most important one. So you can see here what I've got, I've got the M3, the M4, the M3 Pro with the 11 core, the baseline version, then the M3 Pro with a 12 core CPU. So this is the more advanced one. And then obviously the new 12 core M4 Pro. So yeah, this is what I want to compare to you guys to show you the differences here. So you can see straight away in just single core performance, the big differences that we actually have here. So you can see that we're getting around about sort of a 3000 kind of range here for the actual sort of single core score along the M3 and also the M3 Pro. And obviously we can also see that the M4 series and the M4 Pro, we're getting a sort of 3800 kind of numbers there, what's really, really amazing. But the multi-core performance is where everything lies here. Just look at the difference between M3 to M4 first of all, 12,000 152 to 15,312. That is a big jump in itself. And in fact, if we actually compare now the bigger one that all you guys want to know, the baseline M4 10 core to the M3 Pro baseline 11 core, you can see that it is a head here. It is amazing to see we're getting a multi core performance of 15,312 compared to 14,042 on that 11 core. What's even more amazing though is look just underneath that, the 12 core. M3 Pro gave us a score 15,284 and the M4 can even still just about outbeat that 15,312. What is amazing to see. Obviously the new M4 Pro at the bottom there, the 12 core, the multi-core score is, yeah, it's ahead there. It's around about 25% more faster than what we got with even the 12 core version of the M3 Pro. But it's amazing to see that obviously that we have a 10 core M4 
and it can actually beat out the 12 core M3 Pro from the last generation. So just straight off the bat there, right away, just if you did a Geekbench 6 single multi-core performance, the M4 MacBook Pro beats out the M3 Pro and also the 12 core version and the 11 core version, what is just amazing to see. But then what I've also done, I've done another test on these MacBook Pros and I've actually tested out Cinebench. So let me show you the scores here for this. So this here is Cinebench 2024 single and multi-core CPU score. So this time I've just done the baseline M4 and the baseline M3 Pro. And you can see here in single core performance, obviously we're getting 174 over 139, so we're better there. And then this is where it just gets amazing again. Just look at the multi-core performance. The M4 with the 10 core, 978 over 847. What well, is just incredible for what you're getting for 1,599 US dollars. Now, at the moment, just in CPU performance, I would say, yeah, the M3 Pro is behind the M4. Now, I wouldn't say that if you've got own an M3 Pro that this is really bad or anything, and then they should just throw this away or sell it and buy yourself an M4, because the graphics cores, well, things are about to change as you're about to see right here. So looking here at Geekbench 6 Metal graphics scores, it's a very different story in what we've got. So you can see here with the 10 core M3, and we've also got the 10 core M4, the scores there, we've got 40,753,470 ish sort of there for the M4 10 core. But look at the 14 core of the M3 Pro, 68,915. It is definitely ahead there. And even if you went for the more specced up 18 core version of the M3 Pro, well, look at that, 78,608. And then just to show you there again, the M4 Pro, the top range one, if you got for the 20 core, it's got 113,258. But the main thing that you guys are probably looking at is that M4 10 core to the 14 core M3 Pro. There is definitely a bit of a leap here in front. So on graphics performance, just there, just on Geekbench, you can see that the M3 Pro is definitely better than what we got with the M4. But moving on, let's have a look then at 3D Mark. And I decided to do the Wildlife Extreme Unlimited Graphics sort of test. And again, you can see that the M3 Pro with its 14 core GPU is ahead here of the M4. The M4 got 8,907, but then the M3 Pro with that 14 core got 12,095, almost 12,100. So with this then, what I would be taking away, that if you are looking for something where you just actually need the CPU performance, if you're doing things like day-to-day -day tasks like Word, uh, you're searching around on the internet and things like this, and maybe you're dabbing into Photoshop, maybe you're dabbing into some sort of 3D editing sort of tools and things like that, then obviously the M4 is a great device and it's more than capable. But if you need to go even further into graphics intense kind of tasks out there, if your work actually pushes you to do that, and only for that, Maybe the M3 Pro is a better bet to buy, especially if you can buy it for a similar price to the M4. But something else though that I want to talk about very quickly on this channel, and that is the giveaway we're also doing. And that is for this. This here is for an iPhone 16 Pro Max, and this here is the 256 gigabyte storage option. And then obviously it's desert titanium or titanium desert. And I'm gonna be giving it away to one lucky subscriber time near the end of December. And it's gonna be just before sort of Christmas sort of time. And if you want to enter into this giveaway, all you have to do at this stage at the moment is just put down into the comments below of what kind of Apple gear or even maybe none Apple gear that you're hoping to still get before the end of 2024, going into 2025. Maybe it's one of the new M4 MacBook Pros or maybe an M4 Mac Mini or something else. Maybe you're going to get yourself a PS5 Pro which just come out. Or maybe it's going to be something like a DJI Pro sort of drone or something like this. Just let me know in the comments below. And the other thing that I just want to also say to you guys is that you don't want to miss out on the video because I'm going to be making near the end of December time because there'll be a few more details about the giveaway. For example, there'll be a little form to fill into. And also I'll be telling you guys when I'm also going to be doing the live stream for this iPhone 16 Pro Max. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. And the last thing I just want to quickly say to you guys is that sadly there are still lots of scams and spammers out there, people still impersonating to, telling you to WhatsApp, to Telegram, Instagram, direct message. Please do ignore these people. Better still, you can see right here. Please do report them.
So moving on from CPU and graphics sort of tests, we know now the M4 is definitely better in CPU performance, but the M3 Pro is definitely better in graphics performance. But what about the actual SSDs, the NAND chips inside, the 512 gigabytes in both of these, which one is faster? Well, I decided to do a Blackmagic disk speed test. And as you can see here on the chart, well, the M3 Pro is definitely ahead. The M4 does still really do impress us with a score of 3037 read speed compared to the 4976, and then the write speed is 3398, compared to, you know, almost double that at 6,101 write speeds. Apple definitely had it in their minds. Obviously, this was more of an even more pro machine. So that's why they have faster NAND chips inside of it. But again, I am going to put it out there that anyone who owns even, say, an M1 MacBook Pro or, say, even the M2 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air will even had even slower SSDs. Not many people are complaining that they're getting kind of any major bottlenecks or anything like that from that. So so what I would be saying that that speed of the 3000 kind of speeds and you know 3400 kind of speeds on the M4 to be honest with you for the people who are going to be buying this MacBook Pro and the tasks that you do that's going to be more than enough for you most likely if you are going to be a person who's going to be pushing out you know hardcore renders and things like this then you probably wouldn't even be buying this you'd be buying yourself an M4 Pro or even say looking towards an M3 Pro a bit more cheaper out there and that is why the speed inside Side of this for the actual storage is faster. So it is interesting to actually see that. But the next thing I want to move on to for you guys is actually the difference if we actually ran, say, Final Cut Pro and we exported a movie on here. Now, I've got my Mac Mini sort of 10 minute video here, and I've decided to export this in Hevec because obviously this is one of the most popular kind of formats that a lot of you guys export out there. And let's have a look then to see what the difference is if we actually did the export and the difference in how long it took to complete this. Well, we can see that the M4 10 core version took 236 seconds to export this, whereas the M3 Pro with the 11 core took 234 seconds. We're talking a measly two seconds difference here. And to be deadly honest with you guys, I ran this test three times just to make sure because it's so close and the M3 Pro always beat out the M4 by about say a second to about three seconds sort of difference. So I think maybe you know that extra core is maybe helping maybe the bit more faster storage I don't know or maybe it's you know the two gigabyte extra bit of RAM inside there I really don't know it's slightly better but Two seconds, guys. Really, it is nothing. Really, like I said, there's no difference there whatsoever what you're going to notice if you're going to be doing those kind of sort of exports like in Hevec, for example. Personally, again, if this was cheaper than this one, I'd be buying this, you know, and sacrifice those two seconds. It's really nothing in it whatsoever. But I think what we can come to, though, with doing all those tests and the conclusion here, for generally for most people out there who need to do day-to-day -day kind of tasks and need a bit more of a pro kind of machine than, say, a MacBook Air, the M4 is going to be more than enough for you. But there again, if you do actually need to do more sort of graphics intense kind of tasks, I would still be looking for an M3 Pro at a discounted amount, or even the M4 Pro if you're willing to pay the full kind of price out there, because this is still a great machine. And I want to tell people, bought the M3 Pro, don't have any regrets that you bought this, that the CPU is faster. You know, it is obviously going to be a bit more faster, but really it's going to be fast enough for you guys right now. And you saw all the other kind of advantages there, what we saw with say like the actual storage is faster, graphics is faster. We're getting two extra gigabytes of RAM, 18 compared to 16 gigabytes of RAM. But again, you know, the M4 does also have its advantages with the better battery life. And also it's caught right up with the likes for the M3 Pro and even overtaken it in CPU but really it's down to you guys and what you want to pick but I do hope though this video has helped you out today in deciding you know to get yourself a discounted M3 Pro or to get yourself an M4 MacBook Pro let me know in the comments below of what you're planning on doing and with that as well guys it's time to wrap up this video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button also if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparison to make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell until next time guys I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.